find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have you. your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail bar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Beat up for the taste of the blood. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, coming at you live from Pittsburgh, PA. Doing a little production here. Uh, some big shows we'll talk about with the IWC in the second half of the show. But with me, as usual, is my indie wrestling compatriot, uh, the uh, the commentator for Inspire Pro Wrestling, a part of the NWA down there in San. Wait, that's in, in, in Texas somewhere. I, in, I can't remember. In Austin, Texas. Austin, Austin, Texas. We got confused because we kept saying, "No, not you're not in Austin <laughs> before I, the I show." Currently- Physically, right now in San Antonio, Texas, but no, I'm inspired for wrestling out of Austin, Texas. Yes. Of course, uh, one day, I'll, one day I'll teach you the geography of the state. So we'll, we'll, we'll get this. Done. We'll get me down there. I, you know, I, I need to, you know, set foot in the thing to get my bearings. Like I now know more about <laughs> Baltimore than I really wanted to know after the last couple of weeks. You know, um, <laughs> seriously. Uh, but anyways, this is our indie mayhem show. We've got a great interview coming up here uh, with uh, uh, the great Keith Lee. Um, but in the meantime, please check us out. We're over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can find this, the Indie Mayhem Show, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or uh, please subscribe to the Wrestling Mayhem Show on YouTube so you can get all of the stuff we're doing. Um, you can also drop us a line with any of your thoughts about our guests, question for upcoming guests after we announce them, um, or anything else about indie wrestling. If you've, you've seen a show you think we need to know about and need to, to tell everybody about, please hit us up at the email address, Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, or you can hit us up on the hotline at 412-206-WMS0. And of course, you can tune here, tune in here live every Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, so let's get with it real quick here. Eamon, who's our guest this week? Uh, our guest this week is a guy that uh, I actually kind of wanted to have on the show for a good while. Uh, he is... Uh, making waves across the Texas uh, independent wrestling scene, especially now, but uh, he's been doing this for, for many, many years. Uh, and he's definitely the kind of person that, uh, once you see him for the first time, makes an impression. So it's a pleasure to have him on. Please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, Keith Lee. Keith, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys doing? Doing, doing great, absolutely. Um, I guess to uh, kick off, uh, the first thing we sort of ask uh, pretty much all of our guests is sort of an icebreaker, I guess is the best way to put it, uh, is uh, the question of uh, what is your first ever memory of professional wrestling? Oh, man. Uh, whew. This goes way, way back. Uh, professional wrestling in general or my personal experience in it? Uh, uh, just in general, maybe someone someone you saw or, and and looked up to, maybe at, at an early age. Oh, jeez, man! When I was, uh, let's see, in the single digit ages, <laughs> my grandmother used to force me to watch wrestling uh, religiously. Even she was mm-hmm. quite obsessed with it, and she's actually the main reason I got involved. My memories go back to Hulk Hogan and Macho Man, as she was a Hulk Hogan fan. But, you know, I prefer Macho Man, personally. <laughs> well, I would say he was, he was the, uh, the more reasonable of the two as far as that whole scenario went. But I definitely, <laughs> I definitely see your side of it. Um, uh, so, going, uh, you, you, you mentioned sort of like your grandmother sort of like introducing you to professional wrestling when did you start i guess um getting more interested in it and and wanting to pursue it you know as a as a profession uh right uh, it's probably right after i stopped playing college ball because mm-hmm. uh, i played football for uh, texas a&m over in college station nice and uh once i stopped playing football i'm i'm the kind of guy where i need something athletic and Something to keep me busy, and I, I suppose my grandmother's influence initially directed me in the direction of wrestling. But once I got into it, and with my my uh, coach, I was trained by Killer Tim Brooks. Mm. I I immediately fell in love with it. 
Is um I, and what, around what time did you uh, start out? Because I know you you've been doing wrestling for a while, uh, and and you know going back to I would say like I think the earliest stuff I've I've read about you is like two, around two thousand five, two thousand four, around that time. Yeah, man, I I started. Uh, I was actually training in '04. I actually started wrestling in 2005. So we're in the ninth year right now, and I started with uh, PCW, which was located in Arlington, Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, it got kind of a name in uh, Texas for the time that they were uh, relevant, anyway. Definitely, I believe we actually had a. Uh, Jigolo James Johnson on a couple of weeks ago, and he sort of talked about his times uh, in PCW and stuff like that. I, I, I always, I've heard a lot about the company because it kind of, it had a great deal of, a, from what I've seen, like a lot of production value and, and, and sort of had a different style, I guess, from, you know, sort of Texas wrestling, the way you would think of Texas wrestling. Yeah, uh, you know, when it comes to, to I, I kind of miss the days to an extent. But uh, I mean, back then those that they had, as you said, fantastic production value. But on the same note, they had an immense level of talent in their locker room, which uh, for me that made things very enjoyable. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and and you've been you know doing wrestling at that point. I, I for for a good while after that, I know you've been traveling. You, know, you had traveled to a lot of different companies and and. And broke out. Uh, what are some of your your memory, great memories of sort of like your early career? Of maybe uh, some people you faced or uh, uh, matches that you really uh, you really enjoyed, or or, or people uh, that you enjoyed working with. Oh, uh, let's see. The that's kind of a long list, actually. But I'll just pick a few names out off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I'd have to say, first and foremost, probably uh, Lance Hoyt, mm. because when it comes to physical prowess, there are not many that actually stand toe-to-toe with me in the ring mm. on a legit level. Okay, we're talking, you're talking a guy that's literally six foot seven, and he's, he's massive. Mm-hmm. So when I get in the ring with somebody like that, and I have to... It, it pushes me to be more than I am normally. And, uh, you know, it goes from, uh, I don't know if you've seen me in the ring, sir, but it's not very often that I take competition on a supremely serious level. <laughs> yeah, but, I see you do like, you do like to toy around with people a little bit. Uh, just, the, you know, it's, it's, it's good fun. But... <laughs> You, if you put me in the ring with a, a Lance Hoyt or uh, a Vordell Walker, if you've heard that name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, even with uh, some of the guys I've worked with uh, out of WWE, uh, I'll just use their work names. Uh, Bray Wyatt, uh, Big E, mm-hmm. uh, even Evan Bourne. He's not big, but the dude's super wiry, and I, I personally like smaller guys that can go on an athletic level because mm-hmm. it makes me do different things, and I, I, I like that aspect, bringing out more of me than just, well, I can throw any and everybody, so that's what I do, but I enjoy varying my, my style personally. Absolutely, and I've gotten the pleasure of seeing you actually do a couple different styles. I think kind of, uh, people sort of expect one thing from you, but I, I've seen you do dodge to the outside. I've seen you do some really crazy stuff before, so I, I definitely, I definitely see that. So. Um, uh, and I know that uh, you you sort of were wrestling for a, a good period of time. I believe you took a, a bit of a break uh, not too long ago, and you and you started to come back a bit uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, uh, how does it feel? I guess I, I guess best way to put it is like, uh, what kind of caused you to leave for a little bit, and 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 how does it feel sort of getting back into it now? Uh, well, okay, we'll we'll take this back just a little bit further than mm-hmm. what initially caused, because I took about quite some time off for 
I, I wanted to do something specifically that the WWE had requested of me. Mm. Um, not many people know about my personal dealings with them, and I, I try to keep it away because, you know, I typically just don't put my business out there. But yeah. I will say this much. Uh, I've been invited to Florida, you know, quite a few times now. And uh, lo and behold, I, I've not ever been signed. And there's there's always a big dispute between X people and Y people in the company on whether or not Keith Lee will be signed. And I took some time out of indie wrestling to give myself a break from wrestling as shows to prep myself for them. Mm. And even once that was done and they invited me again and I still didn't get signed, I, I grew to a point where um, I decided, you know, it's probably time for me to shoot for other things that I'm interested in. Like, uh, for instance, one of my greatest interests is to go to Japan. Uh, I'm, I'm quite uh, a fan of Japan myself in general. So I came back initially from that state for that. And then I turned around and got injured. And so I was out for another eight months. Uh, and I barely escaped surgery and finally got myself back in a somewhat working uh, condition. And that's when I came back earlier this year. And it feels good to just uh, let go of that and not be so hung up on what they say and actually focus on other things now. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, and I think it's kind of, we talk about it like in the sense of like indie wrestling a bunch on the show, the idea that, you know, you know, WWE is definitely a goal for a lot of people, but I mean, there's definitely a lot of options, you know, going to Japan or, or anywhere sort of, you know, out of the country and stuff like that. I, I definitely would, would see that in, in, you know, the stuff that you sort of target your goals on now. Um, and you mentioned, I mean, your return uh, this past year. Uh, first time I got to see you extensively was uh, for the company, obviously, that I work for, which is Inspire Pro Wrestling. And, and you made a pretty big impression there, uh, 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 inserting yourself into a... Uh, into a bit of a battle royal, uh, coming through our bay door of all places, and 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 uh, aligning yourself with uh, uh, Chris True Biz and his uh, his new movement. Uh, uh, what do you think about uh, your time uh, the, and the stuff you're doing with Chris True and the new movement now, and 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 the stuff you've had uh, so far? Well, before I touch on that, mm -hmm. <clears throat> let's discuss Inspire Pro. In itself, I probably, well, there's maybe only a couple of places I've been in which a crowd was more electric than what I've experienced at Inspire Pro. The reception there was a bit beyond phenomenal as far as how I felt or how I feel when I'm in that ring and the respect that's given no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm throwing teammates or little people or power bombing women, <laughs> there's a love, whether it's, you know, men, women, children, doesn't matter. And that's, that's an aspect I've come to really look forward to when I have my bookings at Inspire Pro. So I had to get that out of the way. I'm thoroughly enjoying my experience there. Now, they regarding the new movement. <laughs> Go ahead. I was just going to say, that, I, that crowd I can attest loves to see you just throw dudes around. So, And especially in Austin, Texas, which I guess kind of gets a reputation for being kind of a hard crowd to, to impress. I mean, you, you definitely made a, a big impression so far. Yeah, and, and it's it's... It's definitely, uh, it's something I, I definitely don't want to miss out on as much as I can, you know. Um, now, regarding the new movement, <laughs> is it all right if I just level with you here? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let's, 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 let's dig deep inside. Okay, so let's be completely and 100% honest here. 
this is not an arrogant statement. This is not a uh, a jack wagon statement. I don't know if this is PG thirteen or not, <laughs> but Keith Lee needs nobody. Mm. Let's just set that out there plain as day. However, well, actually, I'm going to go further than that. Let's look at the group in general. Okay, we've got this adorable little girl named Delilah Doom. And I'm not sure if she's sure of what's going on in the world these days. (laughs) But she's cute. And she works extremely hard. And uh, that's something I can appreciate. Uh, now, recently, we had a, a, a new joinee, even newer than myself, in mm. Gigolo James Johnson. You were just talking about him. And him and I go way, way, way back. Now, all the way back to my first year in wrestling. Mm. And the guy is a very creative mind. And he's one of the people I'm most fond of as far as professional wrestling goes. Now, we have some issues right now regarding the group, but, uh, you know, a little bit of tough love might change that. And, uh, I mean, I mean, you definitely showcased it. I was going to say, you definitely showcased it at the last show, kind of throwing Jiggle around a bit. Uh, I, um, well, that, you know, uh, yeah, in that regard, it, it's kind of the fate of whoever stands in my way, though. If you're going to be in the way, I, I got to move you, and that's just <laughs> that's just the way that goes. I mean, yeah, I uh, <clears throat> oftentimes, uh, you know, I generally don't put a lot of stuff out there regarding fan questions and things of that sort, but <laughs> you know, pretty often I'll get a, a message. It's not always just Inspire Pro, but, you know, just anywhere I'm working at the time. Can you believe, why don't you get a title shot? I'm like, well, nobody with a title has stepped in my way currently, but if that were to happen, then they would be moved as well. <clears throat> and Jigolo just happened to make a bad decision at that time. It, it wasn't anything I set up. I wasn't attempting to... You know, hey, I want this girl one on one. That's just the way the cookie crumbled. Yeah, I mean, so he had to be moved. Definitely. So it um, seems, definitely seems a, a bit of a bit of tension uh, between the group, uh, but I, I I I think you made it you know clear from the onset when you came into the company in the first place. I, re- I remember you telling True very clearly uh, during that battle royal that uh, he needed you, uh, not the other way, not the other way around. Absolutely. I mean. If we consider the rest of the group, we have a a, a team twerk captain, I guess, <laughs> and uh, Jerry Ramones or Raymonds, and uh, I might I have to give him his props because he's really talented. No homo and pause, but <laughs> you know, uh, it's a little out of my jurisdiction personally. But I'll tell you what: regarding all of this weirdness in this uh osh posh hodgepodge whatever you'd like to call it group Mm. there's a lot of talent and in my opinion it's good for business as far as the people go Mm. so in the end i can't complain at all (laughs) because when we get in the ring these guys handle their business with the exception of gigolo Deciding to uh, attack me with our recent match, but yeah. I will I will resolve that in my own time. Absolutely, we'll have to we'll have to see how that uh, how that develops uh, uh, between the new movement. Um, so uh, go uh, sort of to leave off. Uh, we have a question that we do ask uh, all of our guests on the show uh, concerning you know this being a podcast about indie wrestling in general and sort of like the grand scope of it all. Uh, and the people we've had on uh, take these questions, take this specific question various different directions. So feel free to uh, to take it and direct it however you wish. Uh, but the question uh, that I have is, uh, in your opinion, what is the best thing about independent wrestling, and what is uh, the worst thing about independent wrestling? <clears throat> hmm. 
I think that one of the best things, it, it's hard for me to decipher and decide or deduct one special thing because there are many great things regarding independent wrestling as far as the drive that a lot of the talent has or the hunger that some of these younger guys have. There's there's matches I have in the back of my mind. I just want to wrestle certain people because I know it's going to be a five-star match and because I can't necessarily take myself to a certain level if I am not forced to be. Uh, when you look at... Okay, let's take, for example... This guy is actually an associate of mine, a friend even, and I, I, I actually looked out for him when he first started, and now he's a he's a superstar even, and that would be ACH. Mm. But him and I, we want to face each other, not out of bloodlust or out of who's better, but uh, the crowd deserves something like this would be a spectacle that's I don't even think that it could be reproduced on the East Coast or the West Coast, for that matter. Mm -hmm. Because there aren't a ton of athletic, large guys. So when you take an athletic, large guy and you put him in the ring with an athletic guy, well, he's probably a bit beyond athletic, <laughs> then the mixture becomes something so much more. But as far as one of the greater things, I think, is the relationship with the crowd. Mm. It's, it's so much deeper. And it's not a, well, uh, I'm out here and I'm doing my job and I'm being intense for the camera. Mm. And I understand you have to give to the camera and you have to give to the people that are going to be watching it. But on an independent show, it's, there's so much crowd interaction. I don't think that I would probably get in trouble for the amount of time I spend, whether it be uh, just having fun with the crowd or talking down to the crowd, <laughs> depending on how I feel that particular night. Or whether or not I just got my face kicked in. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, to me, one of the greatest things. Um, I think that in independence, there's a lot less cutthroat activity. Mm. Uh, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Professional wrestling is very much like any other entertainment industry. And everybody wants to be on top. And that's fine and dandy, but I feel from my experience with uh, upper levels without even getting, you know, to the complete upper tier, without even getting signed on or whatever else, just being there created such a tension in those workouts. And you can tell certain people were like, they were worried and you can't have fun like that. Mm -hmm. nobody wants to lose their job and I understand that but I've always been a big believer in uh, no pun intended what's best for business mm -hmm. and I mean I grew up in a very business family and so I would understand if I couldn't perform on a certain level that Billy Bob Joe Blow took my spot because he's better. But when you look at the upper tiers versus the independents, Billy Bob Joe Blow is friends with X, Y, or Z. And so Billy Bob Joe Blow will continue to keep his spot. Mm -hmm no matter what harm or hindrance he may cause to a company. <clears throat> uh, I got carried away with that. Oh, no, 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 definitely. No, I definitely, I, I, I see what you're talking about, that whole mentality of, 
it's just a very different mentality, I think, I, I guess, between the two. Um, very much and, so. Definitely. Uh, and and if, if you could think of a, if a worse thing, uh, and it doesn't have to be anything specific or anything, you know, but... Oh, man. Okay. One of the worst things in professional wrestling is professional wrestlers that don't look like professional wrestlers. Mm. There were at least a couple few guys <clears throat> that I've seen. Uh, not Okay, maybe more than a few guys I've seen around Texas since I've gotten back. <clears throat> because uh, you can imagine that upon my return, I... I'm seeing a lot of people, and I don't know who in the blue hell they are. Mm -hmm. And when I see some of these people, I think to myself, well, well, gee, I mean, uh, I don't even need to get in the ring. Chris True.biz can whoop your ass. I mean, <laughs> no why am I even here? I mean, I, I had to comment, uh, Mr. True. The, the when I saw him at Inspire, he's actually trying to trying to get some muscle. I'm like, well, hold on, bro. Don't, don't take my job now. Take it easy. I, I, but, I, don't think I mean, you see some of the. What was that? I was gonna say I don't think you'll have too much of a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you look at some of these guys, and it's just like, why would people pay to see you? Uh, like what are you what what is it about you that makes you professional mm -hmm. uh, I think aside from that it's you yeah, have some people that you just can't take them seriously mm -hmm. <laughs> and i'm I'm probably one of the worst critics about that, but it's just how I was trained. When when I was trained, uh, you can ask Jerome Daniels because he he trained at my camp some. But we were trained old school, so everything was rough, rugged, and snug. Mm. There's a lot of guys that came out of that camp and were so devoted to Killer that they never went anywhere else. But they were amazing talent, just super good at what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of stuff I respect. I like people to hit hard or harder for that matter and go out there and put it all on the line. Leave it in the ring. Be as hungry as some of these guys that are younger. Be as hungry as the guys that are coming to take your spot. It, it, okay. That now that I'm saying that, this is the worst thing, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. This is completely opinionated. Uh, people, workers, fans, whoever's listening, <laughs> do not take offense to this. If you do, I will throw you. <laughs> now, <laughs> when it comes to independent wrestling, I want you to take a step back and maybe uh, a few steps back in your mind and think back to some of the shows you may or may not have attended but heard about, even if you didn't attend, that contained what we call Weekend Warriors. And these are the guys that show up. Not You have two sets of guys in the locker room. You have the guys that want to steal the show every time they're on the card. Mm -hmm. And then you have the gentlemen that are there just to be there. And those guys, just to be their guys, that don't do anything. They could have good size. They could have uh, an intimidating face. But they're, I mean, they're soft. Mm -hmm. They're just... There's, they're, they're not doing anything that makes me feel like, oh, that guy's probably going to destroy whoever he is in the ring with. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't want to put any names out there because they'll get mad and I'll have to kick their ass. But <laughs> <laughs> there are several, uh, even just in Dallas alone, we're not even talking about Southern Texas because to me personally, I feel like there's far more competition in central to Southern Texas. And for me personally, it's been that way since probably, uh, 08, 09 ish. Mm. But there are just some guys in there. They go in there and they lace up their boots and they take absolutely nothing serious. They have no drive. They have no, no, no thirst, no hunger, no uh, determination, no want. And that's these are factors I can't understand. It doesn't compute for me. I don't. I don't comprehend it. But it pisses me off to no end, especially if I happen to be booked against one of them. Right. I like action. I like being pushed. I don't I don't like to just destroy people all the time. I feel like sometimes I, I, I feel like there needs to be like a match between the most athletic big man. I, I mean that's kinda I don't really know in Texas who all is because I, I'm I'm still fresh as far as I'm concerned. I, I did I came back in what, July and I don't really know what the roadmap is like yet. But, I mean, there should be competition. I mean, that's what it's about, right? Yeah, definitely. It's sort of going back to kind of what you said before, of just the the idea of, you know, you know, there's only a certain amount of spots for, for certain people. you got to, you know, sort of push yourself and push others, you know, you know to... to so in, to have care for those spots, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah. Be more. Mm. Want to be more than what you are. Definitely. Definitely. There are guys these days, there are cats these days that they're booked week in and week out. And... I'm not really, I don't always get it, but by the same token, I'm not a promoter and I'm not a booker. Hmm. I'm just a guy that goes and throws people, basically. <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much, Keith, for uh, for joining us this week. Uh, definitely a lot of a lot of really good insight and, 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 and some good discussions. Um, if people uh, on the internet or people listening to the show want to, uh, to follow you uh, on social media or if they want to see you at, an, at any upcoming events, uh, feel free to, uh, to plug away uh, uh, what's going on with you. No, oh, well, you certainly, this is actually a good time because this Saturday, October 25th, I will be attending nwa branded outlaw wrestling which is in san antonio where you are currently i am actually looking and, at the uh, so. oh excellent uh, yeah, in that case, we might need to consider what's that i was gonna say to get the chance to see you throw people so i'm very excited about that oh uh, yeah man it's gonna be a nice little mixture because uh my partner jerome daniels and i uh, we've got a few bones to pick with these sons of Texas dudes. And uh, I'm not going to lie, the, the last show that we were at, I personally, me, took quite the beating. Um, and I was actually pretty jacked up at the hands of uh, Killer McKenzie and uh, Mr. Moonshine Mantel. Definitely. So uh, when when that show comes, it's 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 gonna be some boots in the face and lots of tossing things. <laughs> awesome, awesome, and I, I believe they can awesome. also. I was gonna say they could also, I believe, follow you on Twitter too uh, at uh, Real Keith Lee. I know that you just uh, you just started on 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 uh, on Twitter. Oh yeah, I 
I dreaded I dreaded doing it, but now that I've done it, it's been kind of a cool little experience. <laughs> I can be followed on Twitter at Real Keith Lee, as you said. Also, Instagram at uh, it's at Real Keith Lee as well. Uh, Facebook, just search me and look for the big sexy black guy. That's uh, <laughs> checking hang time, you know. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. So definitely, uh, uh, if you are in a in a area where Keith Lee is wrestling, definitely go check him out and uh, go support his wrestling and what and like uh, like he said, watch him throw people. Uh, so uh, thank you again, Keith. Uh, I believe we're going to uh, me and Sorg and a couple other people are going to be talking about some of the latest news uh, in independent wrestling. Thanks, Amen. Great talk there with Keith Lee. Um, I found something interesting about that show, but we'll talk about it in the, in the calendar here later in the show. Uh, joining us once again, because he likes to get out and watch his wrestling, is The Riz uh, of the Wrestling Mayhem show. He was uh, with us at the IWC show this past weekend, which I'll get to in a moment. But first, Eamon, uh there's some news in PWG I think we want you to touch on. We did. There was some big news that was circulating all through uh, last weekend. Uh, uh, Pro Wrestling Guerrilla uh, held their big uh, untitled event. Uh, this past weekend, uh, PWG one of considered considered by many to be one of the top independent wrestling promotions uh, in the country out of Southern California. And uh, these guys, uh, they've actually been known a couple times before to get some uh, celebrities, like big Hollywood celebrities, actually appearing and watching their shows live, uh, which is kind of interesting. I can't remember some woman that was on a on a like an, an ABC series was that the, at one of the shows. I can't for the life of me remember. Uh, but they actually had another celebrity ass uh, appear uh, at their most recent event, and that is uh, uh, round, uh, Rowdy Ronda Rousey uh, from the UFC, uh, UFC bantamweight uh, champion. Uh, a lot of people uh, that know Ronda Rousey or follow her know that she's a, a, a big wrestling fan. Uh, uh, she's made a couple appearances on, in the crowd in WWE events. Uh, she's even backstage uh, uh, helping Stephanie McMahon in her uh, – ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, uh, uh, and she's even got a bit of a stable in the UFC of a, a female fighters called the Four Horsewomen. So that, that, that says anything. Um, so yeah, and, and she showed up at PWG. Uh, uh, a lot of people, uh, both fans and wrestlers, were, were uh, raving about it. Uh, she even got uh, in on the action a bit and got to chop one of the wrestlers uh, during the uh, Tommaso Ciampa uh, Fifth Music match. So uh, that's definitely a, a, a Something to buy the DVD for, if not for the, for the wrestling. Uh, I just found this this story really curious because I, I think it's kind of a weird talk about, you know, we, we consider WWE or mainstream wrestling and indie wrestling to be kind of two separate things because of, you know, indies considered, you know, the, the, the wrestling for the nerds or the wrestling for the, you know, for lack of a better term, like the smart marks or whatever. But I, I think, you know, uh, Ronda Rousey appears at PWG events and, and assumingly at, we could say at indie wrestling events and, and appears at WWE events because I think it's sort of a testament that wrestling is universal. It's, it's it, you know, you don't love WWE or love independent wrestling. You love wrestling. And, and I think that's, that's kind of a cool thing that, you know, sort of, you know, a talking point. And that's awesome. And, 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 and it's also spreads that kind of mainstream, uh, uh, great for PWG because actually the article I found out that was shown on the video was actually from Fox Sports. Oh, so, really? Yeah, uh, with the pictures and the tweets of, of her backstage with some of the wrestlers and, and some of the girls and stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, great for PWG, great for wrestling. I mean, that's why the, one of the reasons they have her involved with WWE is that mainstream bit because I'm sure there were articles around that as well. Um, oh, absolutely. So, so good, good. And it, and, and it's it's just, it's I mean, not to differentiate the two even, but and not to imply anything on behalf of Ronda Rousey, but you know. People appear at WWE events. Celebrities appear at WWE events all the time, usually to promote something. I mean, this they just, I believe, they only showed her in the crowd at SummerSlam. Like, it wasn't like a big sort of thing. But she just, you know, she wasn't obligated to go to an indie wrestling event. She just went because she wanted to go. You know, that's that's kind of a, you know, an, an interesting thing. You know, it kind of, I think her going to the PWG event just, in a sense, legitimizes her love for it more just because, you know, she's not you know, contractually obligated to go to it. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, I, I definitely, and, and like I mentioned, PWG has, um, this isn't the first time a celebrity has appeared for them. Obviously 
I think the reason they get a bit more traction by celebrities is because they're in the Southern California. Yeah, area. it's proximity so, at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, that's kind of one of the things that play to it. But I mean, I'm sure you know if if Ring of Honor ran out of Southern California, you'd see people there, or hell, even probably Chikara or something like that. Like you know, I think. I, I, like like I said, I think the testament that wrestling is a universal art form. There's no, there's really no difference in you know the reason you like independent wrestling or like mainstream wrestling. It's because, like I said, it's because you like wrestling. It's because wrestling's a universal thing. Certainly, certainly. Um, awesome. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that and see if she pops up even more. It'd be great. I, yeah, I could see her popping up when she's done with her UFC career, maybe uh, becoming a wrestler. Um, no, no, I mean, there's rumor. I, there's no. rumor. There's rumor. WWE wants to kind of bring her in to do like a thing. Mm-hmm. But there's been that rumor for a good while. So, hmm. and that may be a discussion for another show. Yes, <laughs> for an earlier show. <laughs> exactly. So, Riz, you and I, we got to experience the Retro Reunion 200th show for the International Wrestling Cartel. We mm-hmm. talked with Jimmy DeMarco about that last week, going into it uh, here on the Indie Mayhem show. Um, and I don't know, Riz, you're, you've kind of been a long-time international wrestling cartel watcher, uh, as I have. 2005. In 2005, you, you beat me out there, buddy. Um, so a lot of throwbacks. So as a, as a person that's been around for a bit with it, what did you think of it? Uh, for somebody who's been around for a bit for for, I, for the IWC, uh, this was one of the better shows mm-hmm. uh, because of the of the names that they brought back. Uh, and the names that they have still available. Uh, first of all, I'm going to throw out, I, I'm probably the, the first and probably only person on this show, and Missy can attest to this, uh, I can just see her over there, uh, who is a very big J-Rock fan. A big J-Rock fan? <laughs> mm, he... And he hasn't changed since I saw him last. No. And he still talks a lot. Mm-hmm. He's still, and he's still awesome. Um, and the only thing I don't, I didn't like, uh, and this this happens in most any feds that uh, have been going for a long time. Uh, the fans who go to those shows. Uh, they didn't know who J Rock was. Mm-hmm. They didn't know who Mickey Gambino was. They didn't know who Vendetta was. I did. I I marked out for them. <laughs> but I was in the select few who knew who that guy was. Do you think? And and not to you know, you know, sort of pigeonhole it. But do you think it was maybe like? The idea of like the retro reunion, the sort of like looking back on you know the history of IWC, I, I you think that would be event maybe maybe it kind of garners towards like the fans like you or the fans like Sorg or, or the people yeah, that, but, that have been there you know and seen the whole sort of progression of the company. But here's the thing, uh, Sorg, I didn't see anybody I knew. What do you mean? Like in, the, in the audience? Mm-hmm. Oh, somebody from past. back in the day. You mean that that that, that yeah, had been around? Like maybe. Maybe the one family that always comes to the shows mm-hmm. uh, with the dog. Uh, but other than that, it, it's all new people. Yeah. So they don't know. So there's not a lot for history here. Uh, there's yeah, a, there's, there's a not lot... really that much for history. Yeah. Uh, but JTM, uh, Jesse the Mark, uh, he did one of the he, – he got recogn- the recognition that he deserved for making a nice little retrospective video of, of IWC. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure if you have that up or not, uh, but it's just, it was pretty good as a preview of what was to come. Uh, and as for the matches itself, from top to bottom, I can't find a bad match. No. Uh, even the match that got interrupted. Even the match got interrupted. I was flipping out because it wasn't on my sheet. <laughs> yeah, uh, that match was great. Uh, the tech, the uh, Norm Connors Invitational Scramble. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking at the... Uh, and that's going back to the... Because, um, I mean, we talked about it before. The, the four-way scramble tag matches were the greatest thing. That's when we first discovered Ray Row with J-Rock as Cleveland Mafia. That's mm-hmm. when we had Babyface Fire uh, of, 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 you know, now DJZ uh, of TNA uh, teaming up with Gory, who's now... Mm-hmm. Then Jason Gory. And when they call back to that, and they had a great promo where they're like, yo, we used to... We were green, and it's, it's several years later... And now we're heel heat, you know, and and they're so mature in comparison, you know. Um, it, it was it was, it really harkened back to that, and it was it was it was a great feel. Yeah, you know, the tag team division in IWC is unbelievable, and and most of it is from home homegrown talent. Mm-hmm. We are rock stars. Uh, Keith Hot from oh not well he's not a tag in the tag team anymore. Uh, but Keith Hot when he was in the tag team, and Babyface Fire Heel Heat, and and even Flex Appeal. I know they they're not homegrown talent, but that match showed that IWC is going to be great for tag team wrestling. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, as for the main events, uh, and, and this is this, this goes to show a, a good card builder because you have the world title match in the middle of the map in the middle of the card Mm -hmm. and you have the title that everybody wants to see the super indie title in the 200 200th show of their of the federation as the main event Mm -hmm. and that that match had build that match had excellent excellent build by two men who are the future of pro wrestling and then it being a uh, you know friend, we've had them RJ. both on here rj yeah. city andrew palace um you know great stuff going on there uh it, and it really topped off the show even even there was a drawback uh matt cross got pulled from the show thanks to his uh obligations with lucha <laughs> underground mm. so yeah. who gets into the match with him the promoter chuck roberts with uh, oh, john no, mcchesney <laughs> Kudos to uh, Jimmy DeMarco for for making him come out. I don't know. I don't know if it was Jimmy DeMarco's idea or not, but making him come out as Hulk Ho- it, to Hulk Hogan's real American. But that was either brilliantly done, mm-hmm. or it was just coincidence because there was a Hulk Hogan. There's a guy just of Zolgo. <laughs> <laughs> There was. <laughs> there was a guy, yeah. Uh, like I said, all around. Did, did you. Sorg, you were back there uh, film, uh, doing all your stuff in the back. Yeah. Uh, was there a match that you can say wasn't up to par? Uh, no, no. Uh, you know, because my concerns were other other places. But um, but I, I thought uh, all around a uh, very good show, very solid show. I think uh, we, there's been a lot of discussion with, with some people where you know even some of these smaller shows that we that we've been to with IWC uh, that were like kind of the B shows, you know, the white Oak shows, you know, court times are really kind of usually the big deal shows, right? Like this is our SummerSlam and WrestleMania of the year for right. IWC. Um, you know, I mean, just look at these compared to, you know, the one camera lit up room and gymnasiums were in, uh, community centers and the other shows. Um, so familiar sort. What's that? It sounded so familiar. Does it? <laughs> but but <laughs> but the line the but the line has been you know those shows have been better than they were supposed to be, better than you could have hoped for, uh, better than they were planned for. You know some yeah. of them you know maybe weren't really planned out to be great shows. You know not mm-hmm. for lack of you know wanting them to be but the talent in the ring has really been pulling out and it's a really oh, yeah. good group of people in there and there's a lot of names that maybe you don't know you know much like i listen to you know a lot of these guys inspire and i don't know a lot of those guys but you guys are pulling out great shows and, and great groups of talent down there i feel mm-hmm. like iwc is kind of doing the same thing up here and most of that goes to with the crowd mm-hmm. the crowd is in iwc is hot for you know their guys like Andrew Palace, John McChesney, uh, even uh, Keith Hot, as I like to say, as I like to point out a lot, uh, and Dalton Castle. They were all towards 
their fan their fan favorites, and they loved every minute of. Them. Uh, I even tw I even uh, sent out a nice little message to Eamon about our friend Asylum. Mm. Uh, <laughs> from Texas, right? What's that? Is he? I, I, was, was he from? Was he? In I don't your, know. Maybe uh, originally Mexico? he's from. Uh, he comes from Canada. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I thought he was more. <laughs> he's Canadian. Have you ever heard him talk? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, uh, I think I don't want to. I think we just think that's how the people talk in Texas. I'm scared of him, Sorg. Oh, he's such a nice guy, though. Have you seen him pick up a grown man and throw him around? Yes, but he's. I've also had a, a, a short conversation with him. He's such. He's such a nice person. He's Canadian. Come he, on. Yeah, he, he is Canadian. He's a. He's, he's Canadian. He's, he's, uh, but, he's a. He's, he, well, he's an adorable furry Canadian. Yeah. That's why. Probably. That's why he has so much hair. Who can probably break me in half? <laughs> yes, he uh, can. I hope he never listens to this. <laughs> no. Uh, but I sent out a message to Eamon, who I thought saw him first before hmm. us. Uh, and I, I, I saw him on WWE TV as Paul yeah. the Doctor. <laughs> yeah. But before that, I was like, Asylum is going to be huge. I didn't say those. In, in, I didn't say that in exact words, uh, but. That man's gonna be huge, and wherever he goes, mm -hmm. like the strength that guy has, holy shit! <laughs> what else? What else can we talk about about that awesome? Oh, show? that's about it. It was a great show. Go check it out. Retro reunion. It's gonna be digital on download. Uh, it should be by the morning here. Uh, over at soyertronmedia.com slash store. Um, a lot of great stuff going on there. Um, you know, of course. Uh, great career talent and uh, you know leading up to uh, big stuff coming in December with Matt Hardy uh, being involved taking on big league John McChesney uh, at winner takes all in Elizabeth uh, so we'll be hearing about that going in and of course next month we're going to be doing clear combat in Clearfield uh, where they've already like announced Clearfield Cryclism? no we don't do that anymore oh. it's combat in Clearfield 7 it's a seven. Because, they've only it's, had. I guess it's an easier thing to say. They only uh, had. Hey, combat control. Clearfield Cataclysm was an awesome name. It was an awesome name. <laughs> yes, I, I really want to thank whoever came up with that. Yes, name. thank you, whoever came up with that name. Cataclysm on a random IM and said you should call it this. You know, because um, it had no name and it needed a name. And for four shows, it had that name, and nobody. We, 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 we should start like suggesting new names for it <laughs> mm -hmm. since they've had seven of these things. Well, let's so. see. You can do Clearfield uh, Collision. <gasps> Ooh. Uh, Clearfield. What's, a, what's another good alliteration? Everybody tweet, tweet uh, uh, at IWC or Wrestling Clearfield on the Twitters uh, your ideas yeah. for uh, we love alliteration in pro wrestling. Um, we could do something for White Oak. White Oak. No. Clearfield Conundrum. No. White Oak Wars. White Wars at White Oak. Yeah. The the White Oak Wipeout. I don't know. No, I do not. I really like the Wipeout. I really want to see the White Oak Wipeout. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want it to be like Bash of the Beach theme. And like for no uh, reason. I'm sure they don't even have a beach. I one. wish. I'm hoping I can talk. I, I'm hoping I can talk one of these groups that I work with to do a theme like that. Because I love hey, seeing. Did you, did you just say there's a, there, you hope there's a beach in White Oak? I, I'm sure. That, I mean, I'm assuming. I'm pretty sure there's no beach in White Oak. There's no beach in White Oak. Well, then we're screwed. There's a lot of mountains around here, dude. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, so there is wrestling coming up here in Pittsburgh, at least. Um, I know PWX Pro Wrestling Express. Uh, if you're curious about them, a lot of uh, friends of the show involved, including Gory, once again, um, actually taking on Shinya, Ish Shinya Ishida. Sick. Help me. Um, Eamon, uh, who I believe is the one guy we saw uh, briefly uh, on the IWC show uh, for for a title match uh, over there, uh, liked what I saw uh, very briefly there. Shirley Doe, who we heard about a little bit last week uh, with Jimmy DeMarco, uh, and all kinds of great stuff. If you want to check out what PWX is doing, they do have uh, some some video online episodes of their their show at P Pro Wrestling Express dot com. I believe also PWXTV.com uh, gets you there as well. So go check them out. I'll be busy playing video games this weekend myself. Also, yeah. I saw Chikara is going to be down in... Uh-oh, this is the page uh, without the address. Carolina? 
wasn't it? Yes. Uh -oh. Jacksonville, North Carolina. Yes. The yes. Jakar's Thunderball, including mm -hmm. uh, looks like a giant match with uh, Icarus Kingston and the throwbacks against the Flood, the team led by Jimmy Jacobs. And I uh, believe uh, on that show, uh, Icarus is defending his title against Jimmy Jacobs. There you go. It's a big kind of... Could be a big turn point for uh, for uh, Jakar for wrestling. So big weekend there uh, as they uh, head down to Gibsonville, North Carolina. Uh, yes. Good to see Jakar getting around. So. Absolutely, I mean they, they, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Now. They are. They are good. Good to see. Um, and of course, uh, you want to mention some more about that Brandon Outlaw wrestling? Definitely. And actually, there's two big events happening for the National Wrestling Alliance this weekend. And uh, uh, on the same day uh, in two different parts of Texas, because that can happen because Texas is huge. Um, but uh, there's, uh, like I mentioned, NWA Grand and Outlaw Wrestling, which will be Saturday, October 25th uh, in San Antonio, Texas at the Woodlawn Gym. Uh, our guest Keith Lee will be there in action. Uh, uh, also in action, uh, definitely one thing that stuck out to a lot of us, uh, uh, Pittsburgh and IWC star fabulous John McChesney will be there. Uh, in action, uh, taking on another friend of the Mayhem show uh, and, and current uh, Inspire Pro champion, Dirty Andy Dolph. Uh, so that will be a real fun one. Uh, uh, I actually get the pleasure to see Big Chesney uh, compete in San Antonio and, and I believe also Houston uh, when he came up last time. Uh, so this is a, this will be a really cool tweet, a cool treat, and I'm looking to make that, that show. So I'm very, very excited for that one. Uh, there's also on that card uh, James Claxton defending the uh, the Brandon Outlaw Championship against Jax Dane in a San Antonio street fight. Uh, there's an intergender tag team match. Uh, there's some really cool stuff on that card, so definitely go check them out uh, at Brandon Outlaw Wrestling. I'm looking to be at that show. Uh, but if you're not near San Antonio and you're near Houston, uh, NWA Houston has an event on the same day, uh, Saturday, October 25th. Uh, some big matches on that card. Uh, Steve Anthony's defending the Lone Star Heavyweight Championship against Carson. And another big matchup, uh, for a huge matchup for a friend of the show, uh, Barbie Hayden defends the NWA World Women's Championship against Delilah Doom uh, in uh, one of Delilah's first shots at the World Women's Championship. So definitely really good stuff there. Uh, that's in Cypress, Texas, same day, uh, Saturday, October 25th. If you want uh, information on that, you can go to nwahouston.com. So definitely go check those out and just support indie wrestling everywhere because there's got to be plenty of stuff happening. There's got to be at least one or two promotions happening in your area. So. That's right. And like I mentioned, hey, this weekend, check out, if you go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com, we have a link over there for Extra Life. We're raising money, uh, myself along with Riz here, uh, for yes, <laughs> for um, um, for St. Vincent's uh, uh, Hospital Children's Wing up in Erie, PA. Um, we're going to be doing 24 hour game -a thon that's going to be right here at live.sorgatronmedia.com starting at 10 a.m. October 25th, going into 10 a.m. the next day, Saturday through Sunday. This weekend, Riz, yes, I don't know. Did you have anything else pluggy you wanted to say about it? Uh, you know, by the end of today, by the end of tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, which is Wednesday, if I get $50, $50. A fifty dollar donation. Mm -hmm. I will play any video game you want me to play from the Xbox 360 or Wii U, which is the only two systems I have. <laughs> but they do have the downloadable stuff, so I can download it on there and play it there. Uh, but you get to choose. I believe two years ago I played uh, Echo the Dolphin. Oh wow. <laughs> Which was so much, so, so, yeah. Um, oh, wow, is right, Sorg. Uh, but it's up to you guys. Donate now. Uh, we are 40% away from our goal, Sorg. Nice. Awesome. Eamon, where's your, where's your donation? My, I already told you. Uh, my donation is coming very soon once, uh, once money is in plug. Maybe I'll give you that $50 and maybe I'll. Roll. Choose which game. There you um, go. Say back there you wrestling, go. aren't you? I, it's a good game. It's a good game. Oh, God. Wait, which game? Backyard Wrestling? Backyard yeah. Wrestling is a good game. Dude, I dig on the Backyard Wrestling. I'll play some Backyard Wrestling this See, weekend. Sword knows what's up. Yeah, Sword I got both up. versions of it. Wrestling. But yeah. yeah. Oh, Unfortunately, wow. it's a PS2 one, so it's going to load forever. <laughs> True that. There's going to be. It had to have been also like on the like, original Xbox or whatever. Maybe that'll work. Um, and also, if I reach my goal by the 
by before bef if we reach our goal in the next two days I will play five nights at Freddy's oh god what so we're look it up I'm looking it up okay on that note, hey, thanks guys for joining us. Please, uh, of course, uh, uh, support ins uh, uh, support. Yeah, Inspire Pro. Yeah, Inspire Pro I, like, we it, actually it, just announced our lineup for Fun 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 Fest. There you go. Yeah. Check out the Fun 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 Fest. Uh, you can fun, check fun, us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Look up the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Citrus Spreaker, and YouTube, and iHeartRadio. Uh, subscribe to us anywhere that is uh, you, that you find us. Rate us if that's an option. Thumbs us up and down. Comment on us. Let us, let us know what you think about what we're, what we're doing here. Big thanks to our uh, guests uh, this afternoon or uh, earlier this today. Oh God, it's too late. Keith Lee at Real Keith Lee on the Twitters, of course. And you can hit us up at Good Times at WrestlingMamShow dot com or four one two two zero six WMS zero if you got anything to say to us. Um, at Mayhem Show on the Twitters, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Google plus and facebook and of course we're here live every tuesday night 11 p.m eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com until next time oh at the e -riz, at aim and two please i'm at sorgatron and please support your indie wrestling never said i was a gangster or thug but i'm an animal for the taste of the four six 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 you know how i act now when you got a problem come and see if i'm a this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>